for the next tiny talk uh, will be presented by Un Choa uh, from Latis. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So this is about the uh, supporting TensorFlow Lite microcontroller uh, in tiny low power PGA. So we have been supporting the uh, neural network uh, solution uh, using the uh, solutions that called the Sensei AI. It's uh, fully hardware based and it's, so it's very optimized for power and performance. And the goal it was uh, make it cost effective and power effective for the mass production product. So it covers uh, like a very small RPG, like a five millimeter square uh, home vector RPG and 16 millimeter and other RPGs. So this was a very uh, effective and well accepted by the customers uh, for the mass production, but we soon found that this is a little bit uh, still hard uh, for the software engineer to use, even though we are supporting the neural compiler, they're compiling the neural network for the RPG. So we decided to support uh, TensorFlow Lite. And as you well know, the TensorFlow Lite is a C++ uh, in CPU, and we can add accelerators. And it's uh, very flexible and easy to adapt, and also easy prototype and software friendly. And uh, in the implementation perspective, we are using the RISC V as a baseline MCU, and it's a, a soft IP, so it's RTL for these RPGs. And we are using bare metal, not the, any uh, operating system to reduce any redundancies. And TensorFlow Lite is in the form of the C++. And the important thing is that we are adding a, a very different uh, various uh, hardware accelerators. And with that, um, the system is a simple SOC. So it has a risk of file and AMBA bus and some of the sensor interface and all the accelerators are connected to these uh, buses. And the risk of file is running the TensorFlow right in C++ and also they can learn the other Python and other things too. And the design flow is uh, uh, quite straightforward. It starts from the general uh, TensorFlow training in the GPU machine. And then we're converting those things to the uh, TensorFlow Lite converter from the Google. And then we are using AP quantization. And then it becomes TensorFlow Lite and it's uh, converted into uh, C++ uh, uh, form. And then we are using the C++ library for TensorFlow Lite. And then it mapped to the uh, SOC uh, system. And you can, we have our own tool called Redis Propel that convert, uh, generating the SOC. Or you can use uh, uh, LightX, that is open source tool, and open source tool supports uh, a couple of our RPGs, and they are basically generating the SOC system so that it becomes a map to this kind of uh, SOC system. And um, we start uh, from a very uh, simple architecture. So we use the uh, risk file, and it has to have an uh, instruction cache because uh, we are using the uh, flash memory for the uh, uh, execution in place. So you, we need an uh, instruction cache. And then, then this instruction cache becomes a master for the instruction bus. And then this flash becomes a, a, like a instruction ROM and as well as the data ROM. And then this uh, SRM becomes a block storage memory. And we put the, uh, the sensors and accelerators and both of them are a slave uh, devices. So when the, it starts, it asks it ask the grab uh, one frame, for example, in the camera sensors. And then camera sensor grab the uh, data and inform that uh, to the risk five, then we are reading those data and then putting into the memory. And then risk five is getting those things as open and then execute, uh, uh, sending those data to the accelerator and then it computes the data and putting back to the memory, something like that. So the instruction extension, like uh, uh, some uh, multiple vector multiplication is done this kind of a method. However, we soon realized that there are a couple of uh, bottlenecks. First, uh, this flash memory. And flash memory is quite different from the general SRM in that it always requires a command address and data, command address very data. Uh, in the normal uh, standard uh, command, there is no instruction for like a, a first uh, access. So instruction becomes a uh, fetching is very inefficient. And also risk five has, because these two are the slave, risk five has to get involved in the, all the data movement from the sensor to the memory. Also feeding this uh, accelerator, it has to be involved in the uh, risk five has to be involved. So uh, these things are uh, becomes a bottleneck. So we modify this structure uh, a little bit different. First, uh, we added the, the prefetch uh, uh, accelerator. So this is not a computation accelerator, but it's a, a prefetch accelerator that exploits the uh, functions of this uh, special uh, flash memory. 
and flash memory, many vendors supporting uh, some sort of the first instruction, and that is not a standard instruction. So it's a vendor to vendor different, and also their timing is different. So uh, we, based on uh, the flash memory we are using, we add a prefetch buffer. So that when the uh, instruction uh, request comes in, we already know that this is coming from the instruction cache. So it should be an instruction uh, cache fill. And it means that uh, we have to read the whole uh, cache line. So we, instead of uh, fetching one data, one uh, word, we are fetching four, uh, four uh, cache line data uh, using a special instruction that is specific for each uh, flash memory. Then we can just uh, command the data, command the data, and we can skip all the uh, address part because it's the first access. And also we make this uh, sensor as a master. So instead of uh, keep getting all the data, uh, disk five is getting all the data, we are just asking, asking, just asking one frame of data to the sensor, then sensor gets the data, and this master is putting all the data to the SRM and informed to the disk five. Also this uh, accelerator becomes a master. So uh, risk five is instead of uh, keep giving the one instruction, one instruction, one instruction with the operand, it's just asking, giving the address of the operand, and then uh, like a pull up uh, area, then the, this becomes a master and processing everything by itself. And then when it's done, it just informs the uh, uh, done signal to the disk file. So, uh, but still there are some, uh, the remaining bottleneck is memory um, because uh, memory is the area that all the block has to moving back and forth. So uh, this is our SRAM and this SRAM is a 32 bit uh, wide. And because we are using the IP quantization, we can have a four uh, operand at a one cycle. And for the, for example, a channel input data, this is a layout of this input data. And what we do is uh, we are dedicating uh, engines for each of those lanes. And this uh, becomes uh, an engine for the channel zero. And this is becomes a uh, engine for the channel one, something like that. So we first read this uh, IC zero and then uh, do the computation here. IC one into channel one data here, something like that. And then we uh, jump into the next uh, uh, data. And this uh, data address is coming also from this uh, um, this accelerator because accelerator is the uh, master. So we give the address and uh, how much uh, we have to skip, like a jumping uh, stride. Then it's just generating all the address and then it uh, gets to those data and do the computation this way. Uh, however, if we want to do uh, more computation, uh, we cannot do more input channel uh, parallelism because the, uh, in this case, we are using uh, uh, 32 bit uh, memory. So we can add more memory in the parallel, but uh, for the 32 bit memory cases, uh, we are instead uh, exploring the output channel uh, uh, parallelism. So for the same input data, we can use uh, different uh, tunnel data so that we can do the uh, different channels output simultaneously. So we can increase the uh, like, uh, uh, parallelism of computation. And but still, uh, there are some of the issues. That is, for example, the mismatch between the compiler's layout versus the hardware accelerator. So this is uh, for uh, three channel cases. That happens uh, uh, as the first layer, because the first layer is the RGB channel, then it has only three channels. And in, by default, uh, this is the layout that uh, compiler uh, puts those data. So in I see channel zero, one, two, and then channel zero, one, two, this way. So, but if this happens, the problem is we get to two uh, input channel data at one cycle. Then these two has to move to here. So we need uh, some sort of the aligner here uh, to feeding this I2 IC channel IC0 uh, data uh, in the two, two cycle. And similarly, we need another uh, like uh, uh, that kind of a logic for IC1, something like that. And even though we can do that, uh, we are not going that way. And instead of doing that, we are making a different uh, layout in the compiler side. So in the compiler side, we are not using this part and just align those data this way so that uh, we can easily use these uh, three engines more efficiently. So the important thing is that uh, the compiler's memory layout has to know the accelerator and the accelerator has to be tuned for the uh, layout of the uh, compiler. So they have to be matched together to get the most efficient result. And then um, the accelerator of granularity is also important because if the granularity is too small, there, there comes a lot of uh, involvement of the risk of five and that's not what we want. So this is a network and this uh, green box is uh, like convolution batch normalization and uh, loop and convolution is uh, like a nested uh, loop. And then we can make a whole thing from the input to the output as a hardware in the extreme case, or we make uh, this uh, convolution batch normalization as a hardware accelerator 
or we need a convolution, or we need a section of the convolution. And this is input channel uh, part. And if we go this way, we get more performance and more power efficiency because doing everything is done by hardware side. While if we go this way, it's more flexible. So we have uh, many uh, different points in this uh, uh, spectrum and we can uh, choose whatever we want. But the important thing is if we move in back and forth the hardware and the software side, if there are difference in the memory layout, then we have to pay for the uh, redundancy, like overhead to align those memory uh, layout for hardware or back to the software. So their memory layout has to be uh, considered during the, this kind of uh, decision. And we uh, apply this one to the uh, human presence detection. Uh, that is uh, uh, the, one of the example in the tiny ML book by Pete. And this is the uh, numbers from this book. So when this is a map to the uh, cortex M for 64 megahertz for the spy, uh, inference time is about 19 seconds. So this is uh, maybe a, a somewhat uh, old comparing to these days, the latest, uh, greatest uh, MCU, but uh, this is uh, what we get with the cortex M4. And if we map this one to the our smallest FPJ, that is a five millimeter square small FPJ, um, this risk five is a uh, soft IP, this is RTL, so it runs only at 24 megahertz and it has only dual spy uh, flash. And then the uh, inference time is about five minutes. So I have to watch the YouTube video whenever I do the inferencing because five minutes is a long time. And what we did is uh, we put the uh, convolution accelerator, the only the input channel part, and also the fetch accelerator part, that besting the uh, instruction fetch. And the result becomes about 12 seconds. So this is a huge uh, jumping up, and also comparing to this one, it uh, becomes better. And then to see the extreme case, we map everything in the uh, hardware from here to here, and it becomes a 10 frame per second. So the uh, inference time is about 100 milliseconds. And we map the same thing to the uh, more uh, powerful FPJ. So this is a uh, 100 megahertz called SPY. And then uh, it uh, becomes a two second. And also this becomes a uh, 60 frame per second. So you can see that uh, you can have a very different uh, spectrum, very wide spectrum from uh, small, uh, low power uh, or a, low, a little bit slower part, but more flexible to a more uh, non-flexible, non but much faster and more high efficient side. And then our conclusion. So, we know that the uh, to support TensorFlow Lite more efficiently, the optimized engine is very important. So we need a very different kind of uh, engines for different topology. For example, mobile net, we need a one by one convolution. While the uh, the VGG net, we need a three by three convolution, and we can have a different engines for those uh, two different topology. And also, you see that we are using not only the computation part, but the non computation part. We need some kind of accelerator, like instruction fetch accelerator. And the only problem is the ML technology evolves fast. For example, we made a lot of combustion engine, but we may need uh, like a, a motor for like a, 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 the electrical vehicle. And so we need to design engine for new technology. In this case, uh, like a new layers, new different kind of layers, computation model. And the FPJ provides a good solution because it's very flexible and you can update the engine as we want. The other important thing for the uh, efficient computation is instruction and uh, data bandwidths. Otherwise, uh, the engines are starving. So optimize instruction prefetch for specific memory. And the memory, especially the flash, they are different. These non-standard uh, instructions and their timing is different. So it's, uh, it has to be very flexible. And also the TensorFlow Lite uh, output memory uh, layout has to be aligned with the engine. And also engine has to be optimized to the uh, TensorFlow Lite. So FPGA also provided the solution for that. So um, yeah, this means this, uh, I'm, I'm conclude this one uh, is saying that FPGA provides a good solution for TensorFlow Lite with a good uh, audio accelerator. Thank you. Thank you very much for the great talk. Um, I have a, um, a simple question, mm -hmm. like, um, um, Based on your um, your experience, what is the um, biggest bottleneck right now in terms of the acceleration? You showed a very big improvement on, on yeah. several steps. So yeah, the memory. <laughs> so parallel mm -hmm. memory. Um, so if you have a distributed memory, small pieces, distributed memory, that will be uh, really uh, helpful. So uh, mem always, uh, we, it's more easier for us to have more extra computation block like a DSP or other things. Uh, but uh, memory bandwidth is always the problem. Yeah. Thank you very much for the great talk and the question and the answers. Um,
and uh, that's we'll conclude the the tiny um, tiny talks so we're gonna you. follow thank you goodbye thank you. i'd like to acknowledge our sponsors first it's arm uh, that develops software and hardware for tiny ml Qualcomm. Samsung, these three are the executive executive sponsors. And, and then followed by Platinum sponsors. PTA Compute. Lattice Semiconductors. And the gold sponsors are Brain Chip Corporation. Cisco, DSP Group, H Impulse, Emza Visual Sense, Gerald Matter Labs, uh, Green Waves Technologies. Hymex, ImagiMob, Latent AI, Maxim Integrated, Pixel. Reality AI, SenseML, Silicon Labs, Sintiant, and Google TensorFlow. Exmos and the silver sponsors are H Cortex, Hoyts, and uh, Sinsense. Again, we are very grateful for their continued support, and this is a great testimony that uh, the foundation and this community is, re is really of, of huge interest for for the companies and 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 for the whole uh, for the whole world.